Oh boy, we're gonna have a swell time tonight. Winner, winner, sheen dinner. Tiger, uppercut. You've got to take big chances in order for the potential for a big positive outcome. Hail to the king, baby. Hello, welcome back to A Boring Revolution, your number one news source for everything in regards to The Boring Company. Uh, fantastic news today. Uh, it looks like Proofwalk 3, the machine that is going to be operating in uh, Texas, uh, opposite the uh, Giga Factory there, is about to start work. It's been progressing really nicely over the last sort of two weeks, and uh, we've just recently received some information from the Boeing Company X page, and truly am very, very excited to see this because this machine potentially could be uh, the absolute game changer for the Boeing Company. It could also be a massive failure point, but positively thinking, I think this will be a major, major point of uh, progress for the Boeing Company. And uh, it's all happening in Texas, which is, is brilliant to see. So, I'm going to coin the phrase juggernaut for this machine because just like the uh, the man mounted himself, this machine is unstoppable. And um, I think potentially this, this could very well be um, the point at which we, we see uh, the Boeing company come into its own, become a very, very important part of Elon Musk's empire. And eventually become multi multi billion dollar valuation. So, what has actually happened uh, February, early March? Uh, spoil yard and the retaining wall uh, have been fully assembled now. That was good to see. All prefabricated, which is um, great to see. Keeps costs down, ensures a smooth program. Uh, mechanical and electrical units and TBM cabling 90% complete. TBM cutter head, the main bearing and the, the, the shield that uh, follows behind the cutter head have been fully assembled, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, a few other things, conveyor belt, rack and overhead support, around 70% complete. These are just my personal guesstimates based on the images that I'm looking at, but uh, we can be fairly confident that that's correct. Erect and screw conveyor system to be commissioned and the ventilation fans to be tested and then assembled. Uh, uh, they're currently on site, ready to be used, and they will be uh, installed once the machine progresses forward. So let's have a look. So this is the key tweet that's come through from the uh, or post, as it's now known, from the Boring Company X account. Um, posted this lovely uh, photograph of Proofog 3 uh, with the uh, sun um, probably setting there, I'd imagine. And as you can see, the machine is well uh, on, on the way to being set up. Um, there's a few partitions at the back of the machine that, that are going to be added, but that can only progress once the machine starts going. So, Proofwalk 3 lined up in Texas, designed for rapid, continuous mining. Love this phrase. This is what we want to see. We want to see them assembling concrete segments and um, uh, excavating material from the face at the same time. Previously, with Proofwalk 2, uh, the original Proofwalk and Godot, that was not possible uh, due to some various uh, decisions that they, 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 they've made. This machine is not a Frankenstein machine. It is, is built uh, by the Boeing company, almost every component in it, and um, they, they all should work in harmony. And with the use of the hexagonal segments as well, um, we could theoretically see somewhere in the region of uh, 80 to 100 meters per day in terms of progress. Obviously, the first uh, two to three days is fairly slow as you begin the machine, but after that, you will see rapid progress. Um, the important thing to remember here is though achieving 100% utilization will be quite difficult. Uh, ultimately, your machine cannot be mining 24 hours a day. You're going to have periods uh, where you, you, you've got maintenance. You, you might have a maintenance event that, that takes place for five to six hours per day. It might be slightly more than that, it might be slightly less than that. Um, depends on how well they operate the machine. 
Uh, you'll also have components that will eventually fail, like the uh, the cutter discs and the, and the teeth at the front of the machine. Um, mainly teeth on this machine, but um, they will fail and they will need to be replaced. Uh, given the length of this job, it's, it's pretty short. Um, I believe it's less than 500 meters, but, but we're not entirely sure. Um, that, that probably won't be an issue, but on jobs over um, a mile long, you will need to replace teeth and cut a disc and things like that. Uh, and there are many, many other components that could theoretically fail. So, uh, these are some images, images that, that Joe Tagmeyer has, has sent me. Uh, thanks very much for that. Um, this is the beginning of the site. As you can see, we are utilizing these precast concrete um, planks or slabs, however you want to term. Uh, they seem to be using these all over the site for, for a variety of uh, use cases, uh, and it uh, it makes perfect sense. Um, it gives them a hard standing for whatever uh, works they're doing here, and an area where they can assemble these various uh, cabins, uh, M&E units, uh, such such forth. Um, let's let's have a look at this picture. So again, it, it's, it's a similar picture, just from a slightly different angle. We can see our cable runs uh, here, and this is the beginning of um, the M and E package for this particular job. We have our um, conveyor belt uh, rack here, which has been uh, pretty much standard on every single boring company. Uh, job since the Las Vegas Convention Center. Um, not a lot to, to say other than um, progress has been reasonably good. It does take a fair bit of time to get this machine up and running um, and theoretically that might be able to uh, improve but it, it's uh, it, it's always difficult when you're starting from from a, from a blank uh, slate as it were with a machine that you've not worked on before. So these are our hexagonal segments here's another picture looking from above uh, you can see our trench blocks here which have been used uh, in a sense as, as a retaining wall here nice prefabricated method of, of doing this uh, which I like to see very quick cost-effective and they can be reused in other jobs this looks like one giant section of concrete but actually you have uh, uh, stacks of, I believe, uh, four um, prefabricated uh, slabs all on top of each other, and then they pour concrete along the side of that there just, just to make it look nice and neat. Um, and then they've, they've put some on top here. So, so again, it, it reduces the amount of concrete that you need to pour in situ on site, reduces the curing time, uh, and thus allows you to uh, begin work. This slab here was was used um, as a base for the crane because ultimately you, your, your TBM is in this, this pit here. Let's see if I get up. Yeah, so it's in a pit here. Um, the pit's, let's say, around eight foot deep. Um, this is a lot shallower than you will see on typical jobs. You know, if, you, if you're looking at metro uh, jobs in India, for example, you're looking at you know, 35, 40, 50, maybe even 60 foot deep. Um, this is nice and shallow. Um, gives the machine a good, a good, a good like, entry angle here as well. Um, and it, it doesn't have to go in um, from a flat section of ground, which just makes things a bit faster in terms of uh, getting the machine going. All our m and &E units have been assembled here. The controls for Proof Rock 3. Um, I've not seen this on a previous job. Uh, looks like a very large ventilation uh, fan. This is our anchor beam that sits at the rear of the TBM. It allows a connection between the uh, precast concrete segments um, and essentially uh, the back end of the machine there and, and the, the conveyor belt system. Um, this is quite important when you're starting the job as otherwise you wouldn't be able to launch the machine um, with enough uh, force so that, that that's quite that's quite key um, never noticed that before but again it's just one of those things that you, you just don't notice until you see it on its own there it is actually uh, being craned into position um, as you can see it's a fairly hefty piece 
uh, concrete segments are then um, uh, assembled in front of it. Here you can see our, our rack again. We have our spoil pit uh, where uh, muck from the machine collects and then is removed from site uh, using haulage trucks. Here's our uh, silos that are used um, for the grout. The grout is used in, in, in and around the concrete segments in the annular, which, which just fills in any gaps and stabilizes the ground. So here's a more recent picture. As you can see, the, these segments eventually will go in behind the machine. Um, they just don't have the room to assemble them at the moment. And uh, these, these are all prefabricated and, and basically ready to go. It's just a case of um, wiring them up. This here, this section, is a great illustration when I say that it's a very, very, very confined space inside uh, the tunnel. Look at all these cables. Look at the screw conveyor. Look at all the, the various components that, that, that go into this area. And there's very little room to, to move around. Um, so when you're operating in this area, there, there's no room for anything else other than some personnel. You couldn't fit another piece of equipment in here just, just because of the, the kind of volume of cable and, and mechanical systems that are in there. Here's our spoil pit again. It seems a little bit larger than it usually is, which is a good indication of, of how much spoil they're going to excavate on a typical day. Um, typically, you might see uh, a few a few truck, uh, trucks turn up in a day. That might be slightly more than that. Ground conditions on site not looking too favourable. Uh, we, we have lots of standing water, but I presume that could be uh, uh, cleared or filled in at some point. Here's an excellent overview of the site. As you see, this will be the entry point of the TBM. And then it will make a run of around four to 500 meters down to the gear factory. Hard to say what else there is to see here. Um, but yeah, it's a good picture. Look how many segments have. So this is a very recent picture from about three days ago. As you can see, uh, there are a lot of segments stacking up now. This is uh, enough to really get the machine going. Um, and, and there will be constant deliveries of, of segments uh, on flatbeds throughout the uh, throughout the days and, and weeks uh, that, that will be ongoing for this, for this particular tunnel. Um, we'll probably see another line here as well. At some point, but uh, if it's fast, then maybe that'll that'll it'll run through those segments in pretty good order. As you can see, we've now got three courses of these um, trench blocks or uh, retaining wall blocks, um, and and it looks like those have been fixed into position. Um, that will get pretty full, and then it will fill up like such. As you can see on here, we have our beam here. So the beam here is very important. The beam supports this conveyor belt. As you can see, the conveyor belt's all rolled up in a nice compact unit. We, I've never actually seen it like that before, but obviously that's how it's, it's arrived on site. Um, it, it looks fairly flat. Um, it might, be, it might be slightly concave, but uh, it's hard to say from this picture. Um, this will run down here eventually. And then any spoil that, that uh, collects here will be moved via uh, a bumper hoist or something similar into that, that spoil uh, bay there, or spoil yard. Overall, progress looking very very good for the Boeing company this machine is critical to the Boeing company's survival if this machine is a complete failure um, 
there will be some very very serious questions answered uh, asked about the boring company because um given the the, the, the what they've learned from proof Rock one and proof Rock two uh, and given the uh the, the excellent ground conditions in this area you'd expect this machine to be making rapid progress uh, and, and finish this job fairly quickly um I am quite impressed with how they set the site up. Uh, the, the, the focus really does seem to be on prefabrication, uh, using components over and over again, simplifying things, rather than attacking the ground uh, at ground level just by having this pit here, even though it's only uh, eight or nine foot deep. It, it does make the, uh, the job of the TBM a, a lot easier and, and definitely does speed up the process of... Uh, 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 tunneling uh, certainly in the initial stage um, interesting to see how this job progresses but based on what I've seen I think that they will start tunneling uh, either Friday afternoon or uh, maybe um, early the following week but I think potentially Friday afternoon is, is a real possibility for this job um, just, just based on what I've seen and how the machine's set up and uh, what we've seen in Las Vegas, it all looks very, very, very promising. As you can see, we have these ventilation units that, that will eventually sit at the back end of um, this pit around here. Uh, but as they're just starting up, it, it won't be assembled for a good couple of weeks yet. Um, again, this is on some kind of truss system, which I've not, I've not seen them do um, before, or maybe it was installed as part of another component. But again, this the way it's set up. Um, these yellow pipes here run throughout the um, the tunnel, ensuring clean air comes in and out. Uh, regularly which keeps the, the, the personnel in there safe um, this is a very impressive machine we, we really are going to see something quite interesting when it comes to progress of this machine it'll, it'll either blow my mind or it could potentially um, disappoint but based on what I've seen so far and based on what the Boeing company have said in that uh, post on X, I'm very, very confident that, that we'll see 50 meters out of this machine per day. Um, anything above that is an absolute bonus, in my opinion. 50 meters per day is very, very useful in terms of building out systems. Now, it's not 100 meters per day, but uh, if you have enough machines, then you could build out a network of tunnels in extremely quick time. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed those uh, pictures. I will keep you posted as and when the machine launches. Um, if you've not already done so, please comment on the video and subscribe. Tell me when you think this machine is going to launch. Will it be at the end of this week or the beginning of next week? If you've not already done so, please follow me on X, Discord, and consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, as per always, thank you to my Patreons. Really do appreciate your support. Hope you have a great uh, day and I shall see you on the next video. And remember folks, don't be boring. Goodbye. And with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. Hadouken! Come quietly or there will be trouble.